And at the bottom of the touch screen, we have a lot of functional buttons. The first one is the main manual. If you open this one, we'll see a lot of functions and informations we need to use during operating, maintenance, and to check some uh, status of the machine. For the operator, I think what we need to care about is only this sort of pages I'm going to introduce now. The first one is the calibration of the automatic function parameters, uh, which is at the parameter calibration. In this page, we can switch on or off for the auto shaking and also the auto swing. And the next one is the central lubrication. We can set the lubrication mode from auto manual or stop and also to see the status of the next auto lubrication. And then we have the user setting to set some uh, basic parameters for the screen. Except the main manual button, we have some other buttons, including the music button. We can use the radio or connect your phone by Bluetooth to play some music. And uh, the button for the air conditioner. And the button for the lamp. And also the button for the swiper for the front window. And the last button, which was the Sunny logo, is a status page for all of the automatic functions. We're going to introduce all of the automatic functions later, and we can have the status for this function in this page, whether it's working well, or it's stopped, or it's something wrong with the function. This video is an introduction for the E-pad. The first big button is for power on or start the engine. One click means just power on and the light can be turned to orange. And if we want to start the engine, we need to long push this button until the light turns to green. And the second is a joystick for the mast movement. We can use this joystick to adjust the mast manually. And for this big pad, the first line is for three different gears of the rotary, and the second line is for some automatic functions, the auto alignment of the mast, auto drilling, smart drilling. And then this button is for open or close the mast automatically. And this button is for the auxiliary wrench on lock. Because the first time we start the engine, if we want to switch between the main winch or the auxiliary winch, we need to unlock the auxiliary winch firstly by this button. And next button is for the traveling unlock, and this button is for the depth reset. This button is for the swing reset. And this button is for activate the max movement of manual mode. And these two buttons is to extend or retract the quarters of the undercarriage. And these two buttons is for the tensioning cylinder for the crowd winch. And these two buttons is for the mast support up and down. And these two, these two buttons is for the mast cylinder up and down. And we have the buttons for the lamp, for the swiper, for the swiper liquid. In this video, we're going to introduce the functions for the joysticks. Firstly, let's introduce the buttons on the joysticks. For the left joystick, pushing the slider up is for the swing unlock. Pushing the slider down is for one kind of soil shaking auto function. And this button is for the switch between the main winch and the auxiliary winch. And we can get the status on the top bar of the display. And this button is for the auto swing function and at the back of the joystick we have another button for the horn for the right joystick pushing the slider up is for the brake releasing function and pushing the slider down is for the auto soil discharging function and this button is a switch between the crowd system and the boom and this button is the handle memory function and also in some kind of the machines, we have another button at the back of the joystick, which is for the depth gorge activate. 
turning left or right for the left joystick is the swing of the undercarriage, and up and down for the left joystick is a switch between the main winch or auxiliary winch up and down. And for the right joystick, left and right is for the rotation of the rotary. Up and down is for the up and down for the crowd system or the boom. This video is an introduction for the main page, mast page, and also swing page for the touch screen. And as you can see, for the main page, we have many different blocks. The first one is about some drilling parameters, and then this one is about the verticality of the mast. And this block is for the hydraulic system, which shows four different pressures for the main pump and the auxiliary pump. And this block. It's for the main winch parameters. We have the speed of the main winch and also the load of the main winch. And this block is about the rotary parameters. We have the RPM and the loading percentage of the rotary. But I need to mention that here, not all of the machines have the sensor of the RPM for the rotary. So maybe sometimes in some machine, the RPM gonna be keep showing like a zero. And this block is the warning briefly notification. And this block is for the main rear camera. And if we slide left uh, from the main page or we use the joystick of the mask to turn left, we will switch from the main page to the mask page. There are also a lot of different blocks in the mask page. This one is for the uh, information of the degree the verticality of the mast, including the left and right, also the forward and backward. And also in this block, we can adjust the percentage of the speed when you're doing some mass movement. And this block is about the proportional valve current for both the left and right mast cylinder. And we have the block for the load of the main winch and the block for the hydraulic system pressure, specifically for the mast movement. And also we have the block to adjust the mast manually. And we have two big buttons at the bottom to open or close the mast automatically. And if we slide right or use the mast joystick to turn right, we'll switch from the main page to a swing page. In a swing page, first we have the swing uh, degrees and also we have two modes which is auto and manual for the swing we're going to introduce this later specifically and also about the hydraulic system pressure and also uh, the cameras This video we're going to specifically focus on the introduction of the top bar of the touch screen. And as you can see, the top bar has been separated to two different sections. At the left side, we have some information including the engine gear, time, internet connection status, fuel percentage, notifications of the warnings, and also if we connect to the internet and we have some software update, we're going to have a notification at here as well. But I need to mention that here because not all of the countries now can connect to the internet. But we start working on it and I think we can have the internet connection for all of the countries around the world in the coming future. And at the right side, we have some switch status, including the rotary gear, the switch between the main winch and the auxiliary winch, the switch between the crowd system and the boom, and also the lock and unlock status of the swing. And also at the same time, if we unlock the traveling, a new icon can be jumped out at the right side of the top bar. And uh, the operating logic of the touch screen is relatively like an Android mobile phone. So we can slide down from the left or right side of the top bar to get more pages. If we slide down from the left side, we can have more informations 
uh, as shows in the screen, including the engine gear, the working hours, the wind speed, the percentage of the drilling depth, time and date, and also some information for the engine. And uh, the biggest part is about the warnings. We can have all of the warnings in detail that here. And if we illuminate all of the warnings, it can be shows like the machine is working well. And if we slide down from the right side of the top bar, we will have four different pages, including the function, the switch, the operation, and also the calibration. And the function, switch, and operation pages, uh, we can also realize by the joystick or by the e-pad. So at here, we just give one more possibility for the operators to operate the machine based on his own preference. And for the calibration page, it, it is for the technician to do some troubleshootings. All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the uh, auto mast alignment function. Requirement to activate this function is at the left or right, the degree is less than three degrees. And for the forward and backward, it's less than five degrees. And what we need to do is just click this button for once, and the machine gun will start to alignment by itself automatically. So now, firstly, let's incline the mast a little bit. We activate the mast manual movement and use a joystick to incline the mast a little bit. And also the forward. So, as you can see now, the mast is not verticality, so what we need to do is close the manual mast mode and then click the auto mast alignment button for once. And then, as you can see, the main page can be switched to the mast page automatically and the function has been started. And if everything is finished, the page can be returned to the main page. In this video, we're going to introduce the auto mast movement. There are two different ways to open or close the mast automatically. The first one is to click on the bottom on the e-pad, and the second one is we can just click the bottom in the mast page. But there are two points need to be mentioned at here. The first one is we need to take care of the position of the boom all the time if you want to have the movement for the mast. Because Consider the different position of the boom, the limitation for the degree of the mast open and close is different. And the second point is we need to take care of the inclination of the ground. If there's a big inclination between the ground and the horizontal, the mast movement is going to be reach the left or right limit very early. And in the mast page, there will be show a red highlight for the limited side. And also a notification is going to be jumped out and we need to click the confirm to continue the movement for the mast. Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about the auto soil shaking function, which is also named auto soil discharging function. To activate this function, we need to push in down the slider at the right joystick. And the first thing, we need to make sure the depth is minus, which means the caliber in the bucket is higher than the ground. So now we just lift up the caliber and uh, to make sure depth is minus. And now we just keep pushing the slider to activate its function.
Alright, in this video, we're going to talk about the auto swing function. This function is activated by double click this button at the left joystick. So now let's simulate the drilling process to see how it's working. So now we've already finished all of the drilling. The bucket is full of soil, so we need to go to a place to extract in the soil. Now, first step, we need to set zero point for the swing in the A-pad. And now unlock the swing. I go to the place for discharging. And after a few seconds, we've discharged all of the soil. So we need to go back to continue the drilling. We just double click this button. And then the machine is going to be swinging back to the original place for the drilling. And when this go back to the main page, which means the auto swing has been finished. Okay, in this video, we're gonna talk about the brick releasing function. This function can be activated to by pushing up the slider at the right joystick. And uh, let's do it just like this, keep pushing it, and the caddy bar can be going down with its own gravity. And uh, let's pull up the main winch again. Doing the real drilling, and what we need to do is just start the rotating of the rotary and pushing the slider then we can do in the drilling work without any movement of the main winch all right in this video we're going to talk about the memory function the memory function can be activated by this button at the right joystick. Uh, during the drilling, if we already start the rotating of the rotary and we set into the right RPM, then what we need to do is just click once for this button. And then we can release the joystick and the rotary can rotate in with this right RPM always. And then, if we want to stop this function, what we need to do is just click once again, and the rotary can be stopped. Alright, in this video, we're going to talk about how to operate the mask manually. Firstly, we need to activate the manual mode of the mast by click the button on the e-pad. And then you will hear the uh, beep and the orange light can be turned on. At the same time, from the screen, you will see it will change from the main page to the mast page. And there are two ways to adjust the mast manually. The first one is, as you can see from display, we got four keys set here to change the direction of the mast. And the second one is we can operate the mast by the mast joystick, which is near to the e-pad. And uh, then you can adjust the mast manually. All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about the swing on lock. The swing unlock is activated by the pushing up the slider at the left joystick. And if we push up the slider, as you can see, the main page has been changed to the swing page. And also, there are two different modes for the swing. The first is the auto, another one is manual. In the auto mode, as you can see, I just push the slider for once. And then the page is going to be keeping the swing page and stay here for five seconds. In the, if there is no action in these five seconds, the swing will be locked again. And if we switch to the manual mode, 
So in the manual mode, we need to keep pushing the slider to activate the unlock of the swing. Otherwise, if we release the slider, and it's gonna be locked very soon. And now let's we do a uh, swing, unlock, push the joystick, 